so others can watch us burn, Lord God. Tonight, set us on fire. Come on, is that your heart's cry? Oh, I, I feel the heat is rising. The flames on the horizon. Oh, they're at my door. Oh my, I'm staring at the ruins, oh the embers of our brokenness, scattered on the floor, this fire never sleeps, no oh, this fire never sleeps, I see hope, oh my, I see that hope is coming, to pull me from the ashes, oh, ignite my soul. Oh, please, come burn away the darkness, cause your love is like a furnace, we all fire never sleeps. the fire burn up my soul oh stop I never want to miss you <laughs> cause something new is being born and we won't vote for this oh lord we know a day is coming when we look into your eyes, oh, and see a fire that never sleeps. Oh, this fire never sleeps. Oh, your fire never sleeps. No, 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 never of my soul. Come and set me on fire. Purify our hearts, Lord. Come purify my heart. That's what it's for. Come on. Come and purify my heart. Oh, Spirit, fall on us. Oh, Spirit, fall. Oh, God, yeah, 
mean to the fire Oh, your fire never sleeps Burn, oh my soul Burn, 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 burn Come on Come on, we got a bunch of old people in this house Come on you old people. <laughs> you know, the same fire lives inside of us. Ooh, your fire never sleeps.
a must. If we do not rearrange our life, then we'll miss it. Then we'll miss it.
silencing the voice of the enemy tonight he's silencing the voice of the enemy tonight he's silencing the voice of the enemy tonight in your mind in your family but on the interior, you're silencing the voice of the enemy tonight. All around us, the voice of the enemy gets louder and louder, and on and the inside of our minds, the enemy just gets quieter and quieter as the king of glory is ushered in. And we invite him. Lord, we invite you tonight. We invite you tonight. We invite you tonight, Lord. With one, one blow, of your breath, Lord, and all, all, all of the voice of the enemy, all the things, all the destruction in our minds has to go. One, 
one. Just one breath. We'll sing like David did. Full obedience and all submission to our King. This is no joke. We're singing to the Ancient of Days. silencing the voice of the enemy. He may be screaming right in your face, but the Lord is silencing the voice of the enemy. Every word curse that has been spoken is silenced tonight. The blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, takes away the curse. Oh 
come with revival. It's a 
eyes on him. Focus on him. In fact, Alex, shut the words off the screen. I don't even want them up there. Fix your eyes on him. He is worthy. He is the lamb that was slain. He takes away the sins of the world. He breaks every chain. He breaks every curse. Every curse is broken because of the blood of Jesus. Jesus, you're so worthy. You're so worthy of all of our glory. You're so worthy of our lives, Jesus. You're so worthy of everything that's in our lives, Jesus. You're so worthy to take away our past. You're so worthy to take away all the hurt and the, and the dysfunction, Jesus. You're so worthy of all of our lives, Jesus. And so, Lord, tonight, our prayer is that that Holy Spirit that indwells us, Lord, would fire us into a spot where we can submit our entire lives over to you, Lord. Because again, you are so worthy of our lives. And so, Lord, have your way. Have your way in this place tonight, Lord. We surrender tonight, Jesus. We surrender tonight, Jesus, to your will, to your ways, to your thoughts. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus.
Well, good evening again. Everyone doing all right? Better yet? Better now, right? You, right? Better now, right, Joe? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the crazy thing is, is that, um, uh, you know, I can tell you there's been a number of times where I've had a week. You ever had a week, Corley? And, and you know, you come in and your, your butt shows up about 30 minutes later. And, and the music, the worship starts to go. And you finally get out of your little pity party. And you begin to worship just a little bit, Mike. And then all of a sudden, there's breakthrough. There's breakthrough. And your attitude begins to shift. And the atmosphere around you begins to shift. And the Lord begins to well up inside of you. And that's what, that's what the community is so... That's why God has us come together on a weekly basis. You know, to, to get that community, to get that, um, you know, that, that encouragement to go out. Or, you know, to really to go there for, quite frankly. To go there for and, and be a part of what Christ is doing on this earth. Because he's always doing something. That's the amazing thing, Tim, is that God is always at work. He's always at work. And, and, and he's always inviting. That's the ma another amazing thing, Tyler, is he's always inviting us to be a part of what he's doing. He's, he wants to be in, in relationship with us. He wants to partner with us. Or Let me rephrase that. He wants us to partner with him to... to be a part of what he's doing here of, of reconciling humanity to himself. Because, again, we are ambassadors uh, of, uh, of Christ. And so we've been in this little kind of mini-series, if you will, called Firestarters. And, and the idea behind the, the, the sermon series is that, that, you know, we often have to be a part of what God's doing in us. We have to part with him in what he's doing in us in order for it to begin to flame up so that it can be put out into somebody else. And so somebody else can catch the, uh, catch the fire. And so we've been, um, you'll remember, uh, kind of as a definition, we, we put out uh, at the first of the series of Firestarter is a Christian who is willing to fan into flames the gift of the Holy Spirit in their lives for the benefit of others. Uh, is it's one that is willing to believe what the Bible says about them first and humanity around them and seeks to partner with God in a supernatural uh, lifestyle. And that's really what all Christians are called into is a supernatural lifestyle. It, it, our, our Christianity is so much more than just, don't, please don't hear my, hear my heart in this. This is a very important book. It's God's word. But Christianity is so much more than just reading God's word. It's an it's a invitation to come into this supernatural lifestyle of engagement on a literally moment-by-moment -moment basis, Corley. It, it, all we have to do is open our eyes because he's everywhere, always, at all times. And so it's just a matter of grabbing a hold of where he's at work and being sensitive to his Holy Spirit and his promptings, and we begin to... This, this fire begins to burn inside of you. We, we mentioned it when we first started this series that, that um, uh, John the Baptist, John the Baptist said in, in, um, in, in Luke, uh, I think it's 3, I think it was, yeah, Luke 3.16, he says, um, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And so if you're a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit. You have the indwelling Holy Spirit in, in you, and you've also been baptized with fire. However, we have to understand by, very, by the very nature of fire, it burns itself out. And so we've kind of looked at this passage of Scripture in Timothy where Timothy talks about, or excuse me, uh, Paul talks about this, this re reminding him to kind of fan into flames that fire that he has in him. And so, you know, here's the thing. 
We, we, we first started in Acts chapter 2. And it was important for me to start there for a number of reasons. Number one reason was that everyone in the room, everyone in the room, all of the disciples were baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's really important. Every and all. Didn't matter whether they just come to know the Lord or just part, started to be a disciple maybe two weeks ago prior to the upper room experience. They got the full dose of the Holy Spirit. They got the, you know, all, every and all had tongues of fire over their head. They were baptized with the fire of God on their lives. And so that's really important for us to understand. It's every and all. Every and all persons have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Of course, if you're in Christ. Now listen, if you're not in Christ, you don't get any of this. But you can. <laughs> but you can. You can get it all tonight. So, one of the outcomes, one of the outcomes that we discovered in Acts chapter 2 was the, the outcome of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the fire of the Holy Spirit, one of the outcomes is proclamation. It's, it, you know, yes, there, there was tongues, but those tongues were to, pro, to, to proclaim the goodness of God. And so, you know, one of the things that we should be looking in our lives as, as, as believers in Christ, where's the evidence of what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives. Because you remember we like to ask those two questions, James, where it says, you know, the first question is, have you given your life to Christ? And, and if you say yes to that, praise the Lord, hallelujah. But it needs to be followed up with the second question. You know, is there any evidence of the Holy Spirit working in your life? And if there's no evidence of the Holy Spirit working in your life, you may want to re-ask the first question. Because the evidence of the Holy Spirit is proclamation. It's doing what we did here at prayer time. It's testimony. Giving God praise and honor and glory for what he's done in our lives. That's proclamation. That's proclamation of the goodness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, um, I want to... So, so Jesus came, and those that believe in him, he baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. We mentioned that the, the very nature of this fire is burned out, and so... Uh, it makes some sense when Paul encourages Timothy to uh, his son in the faith to fan into flames this gift. And so if you want to turn with me, if you have a Bible, if not, it's up on the screen probably. It's in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. It says, I remind you, and it's so interesting to me, at least, as I was unpacking this and praying it's like Paul's reminding, you know, and sometimes we have to remind ourselves. We have to remind ourselves, hey, it's time. It's time to, time to get back into word. Time to, you know, it's time to fan this thing into flames, right? And so he reminds him, he says, I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flames the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. For God gave us, spirit, gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and of love and of self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed for the testimony about the, our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering. For the gospel by the power of God who saved us, saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our own works, but because of his own purposes and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the age began. And so we looked at that passage of scripture. We've been kind of continuing looking at it and, and just kind of doing this as kind of a little bit of a review to catch us up to speed here. You know, understanding that if we're in Christ, we should have a sincere faith. We should sincerely want to be here tonight. This is not a, oh, I got, oh, I got to go to church. I mean, literally, I get, ex I don't know about you, I get excited about what, because I want to be, I, I hate missing. I mean, there's sometimes that I have to, you know, 
I get sideways and I have to do something and I have to miss. I hate missing church because I don't want to miss what God might do. You, you know what I'm saying, man, Marilyn? I, I, I don't want to miss what God might do because you never know what God and when God's going to show up and, and how he's going to manifest himself. And so I get excited because I don't know about you. If you've been around mortal life too much, you've seen some things. God's showing up here and, and, and wrecked us. And, and you know, I never want to miss that. I never want to miss that opportunity to, to just be a part of what he's doing. And so having a sincere face, being willing. Listen, if you want to be a fire starter, you got to be willing. You have to be willing to take responsibility for your spirituality. Nobody's going to do anything for you. You have to take responsibility and say, I don't know, but I'm going to find out. I don't know. Here's, a, here's what I've learned or what I've seen in just the, the, the short time that I've been in the faith is that I've seen some people that they have maybe have grown up in church. But when you start talking to them, they want to tell you everything that they know instead of closing their mouth and listening with these ears and trying to learn something. We need to have the spirit of... We need to have the spirit of teachability as opposed to the spirit of stupor. We need to listen. We need to investigate. We need to read. We need to pray. And, and we need to get the, the low of the word. And we need to get the rhema of the word. And then we need to get the word. And, and so you know, here's the thing is that, that don't, you know, Paul, Paul's telling Timothy, don't be afraid. And we, we mentioned this last week, fear. Fear is the fire suppression system of the devil. It's the fire suppression system of the devil. It just suppresses the fire of the Holy Spirit in our lives when we are in fear. When we are in fear of anything. God, I, can't, I looked at it, and, and depending on what version you look at, it, it's, we've been commanded over 365 times not to be afraid. You think we ought to take note, not to be afraid. We ought not to be, we ought not to be walking in fear at all. Now, when the, this fear that we're talking about is different than the fight or flight fear, okay? It, you, know, I, you know, if you see a snake and you get afraid and you want to run from it, you know, that's the, that's the fear of God that God's put in you to get away from danger, okay? That's not... <laughs> okay, that's not what we're talking about here. Because, listen, if anybody knows me, I'm a little girl when it comes to snakes. All right, Nikki knows this. I called him out of lunch to come and kill one for me. So, you know, here's the, here's the thing, though. But, but, but you, we have got to get out of this state of fear. Because if the, if the truth be known, we all ate up with it. We are all, every, listen, think about this for a second. You know, don't, don't raise your hand. Every dysfunction that you have is rooted in fear. Every dysfunction that you ever had is rooted in fear. And God says, no, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but of love and of sound mind. And so don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Listen, don't be ashamed of your past. That's a precious jewel that God wants to use. In somebody else's life. So if you got a past, praise the Lord through it. Amen. Praise the Lord that you're through it. But you know what? Use it. Don't be ashamed of that. God took that shame on the cross and nailed it 1,991 years ago. You don't have to deal with that thing no more. Amen. And so this is what a fire starter is. We grab a hold of what the Bible says, and we and then the, the, the flames of the Holy Spirit begin to well up, and we begin to get. Not only contagious, but we begin to catch fire. Other people start catching fire around us. Listen, our faith, man, listen, God is doing something on this planet. If you look around in some of the other countries around the world, the Holy Spirit is moving in leaps and bounds. Literally tens of thousands of people are coming to Jesus. It's amazing. But we, in this country, 
United States of America, and, and because I, I am Canadian, I'm going to pull them in there too so I can offend them too for all my people that are listening to me on the internet. We've let the fire go out. It's just a little pilot light down there. It's, it, it's time to get serious about what we've been called to do. It's, 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 time to, it's time to glory the Lord. Is he worthy? We sing it. Here's the thing. We fear because we don't trust in his purposes for our life. He has a plan and a purpose for our life. Each and every one of us. He has a specific, intentional plan for our lives. And when we begin to trust his plan for our life, as opposed to the, all the, you know, the A's and the B's and the C's all the way up to probably most of us are on J by now, just let it go. <laughs> let it go. You know, I didn't give this to the guys, but, you know, uh, Jesus in Matthew 16 told the disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life well, for my sake, we'll find it. You want to find life and life abundantly? Take your life and kick it to the curb. Take your life and kick it to the curb, man. Kick that bad boy to the curb, you know? So Paul's telling us in, in, um, in 1 Timothy, in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, picking it up in verse 14, it says, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. So don't be surprised if people don't understand you. Listen, I don't know whether you know this anyways, you're peculiar anyways. Right? It says, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to them, to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but it is him himself, but is him himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So, you know, one of the things we need to know is that some would say, well, we aren't supposed to judge anybody. No, but we're supposed to judge. We're supposed to judge everything, and what are we supposed to judge it by? We're supposed to judge everything by the word of God. And by the and hear me, not only the, the rain, or excuse me, not only the, the logos word of God, but the Rhema word of God. We're supposed to judge it by that. And then the actual word of God. Because not everything there is in all of life is encapsulated in just this one book. John tells us that in chapter 20. So we're supposed to take those thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. We talked about that. See, at salvation, we've been given the mind of Christ. Well, we probably ought to use it one time. We've been, I mean, think about it. We've been given, now at salvation, we've been given the mind of of Christ. And so what we need to do is we need to utilize the mind of Christ in our life. And we do that by getting out of our emotions, right? And getting in to the will of God and the mind of Christ through taking those thoughts captive. In Romans, Paul says in Romans 12, he says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's basically saying, my mind died with Christ, or died with, yeah, died with Christ 1,991 years ago, and I'm going to take a hold of Christ's mind. That's how we renew it. We just accept what has actually been done, right? And so, um, be transformed, and by the testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. What does this mean? Well, it means as a fire starter, 
we're already accepted the fact that we're going to suffer in the flesh. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to put you up against the wall and take a cat of nine tails and start whooping you. But what it does mean is that you're going to, God is going to, by way of maturity, going to want to wane some things from you. He, and we're going to look at it later, a little bit later. He's going to want to prune some dead stuff off of you. And that sometimes hurts. Some of the things that you want to do, he's going to say, whoa, daughter, <laughs> that's not what I got for you. That's suffering the flesh. That's suffering the flesh. So, God is going to want to give, uh, give, some, things, give, a, give some things up that aren't productive in his kingdom work. You see, because it's all about the kingdom. This, this, this thing is all about the kingdom work. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, and it's in you, and it's in me, and it's around us. And we've been, we've been commissioned to be a part of the kingdom of heaven. And so uh, the, a fire starter is willing to, um, he's willing to do it for the sake of the work. I don't know, probably, shoot, time flies when you're having fun. So it may have been more than three years ago, maybe even four or five years ago now. Pastor Lee did a sermon series. Uh, I think it was entitled Unoffendable. If I encourage you to, to, to look back and, and see if you can find that series and re-listen to that series because it was an amazing series. God used them greatly in that. We have to get there. We have to get there because here's what, here's what I know personally is that when I get offended, it, takes, it, it, it squelches the Holy Spirit in my life. It does. And what God has for each and every one of us is too important for us to be offended or stay offended. Because God wants to not only work in us, but he wants to work through us, but he can't go through us if we all up in our feelings. If we're all, you know, having a pity party about what's going on in our lives. That was nailed to the cross. We, we really have to start believing what the Bible says, ladies and gentlemen. That dysfunction, that was nailed to the cross. It died with Jesus. The mind that you have been given at salvation, you need to start trap, tapping into it. Some of your thoughts and your ways don't line up to God's thoughts and God's ways. Understand what is important to God and choose God's ways. That's what this thing is. We, we've mentioned it during, during um, the prayer time. It, you know, Christianity is a lifestyle of repentance. It's changing our ways and our thinking about the way we used to think. Right? And so, uh, Peter, in, 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 in Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 3 through 11 Peter tells the church, his divine power has granted us all things. I would have thought I got at least a name in. Let me just read it again just for... His divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he granted us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of a divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love, for if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective and or unfruitful. This is the American church. We all bend shape on everything else but what's important. And we're ineffective and unfruitful. In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blinded, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. 
Have you forgotten what Jesus actually did for you? Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to, to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. And so Peter, he's telling us, we have everything we need to live by promise. It's always been by promise. It's not, listen, I got to say this, it's never been by works. It's always been by promise. We're supposed to be living by promise. But hear me, there's some works in the promise. Because we're joining God at his work. If you go all the way back in the garden, you, you can see it right there. We were never meant to sit home with our feet up, sipping on a pina colada, doing nothing. If the truth be known, when we're bored, we find it very easy to fall off into sin, right? Which ends up leading us to, to death and destruction. We were never created to not do anything. We were created to partner with God in this, in this thing called taking dominion over this earth. That's what, we were, that's what we were designed to do. We have a divine nature. That old nature, dead. That sin nature, if you're a born-again believer, you don't have a sin nature. Oh, sure, you might still sin, but that's not your nature. You have a divine nature. A divine nature to live for God. If you're a fire starter, you need to grab a hold of this. You need to grab a hold of this thing. I got a divine nature. I need to start living my nature. Because a, a sin nature, it's just naturally for a sin nature, uh, uh, someone with a sin nature to sin. Well, guess what's just, just as natural for somebody with a divine nature? To exhibit divinity, the, the divinity of Christ that's in you, right? Because Christ, you are dead. Christ is living through you. So, you know, here's the thing. Uh, a fire star, uh, shoot, I lost my place here. <laughs> Give me just a um, so we have this divine nature, but Christ living through us. Do you believe it? Fire starters believe it. They realize that to live in the flesh is death, but to live in the spirit is life. Supplementing our faith. Fire starters will find ways. They will find ways to equip themselves. Now, fortunately, for those of you that are actually in the room, I'm not trying to pat ourselves on the back. I'm just stating a fact. Mortal Life does a pretty good job of equipping people. But real ministry. For in your face, up close and personal, get a no and get your feelings stepped on ministry. Find ways to equip yourself. Take some classes. We have classes available that are very beneficial, not only for our personal lives, but to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to use those giftings that he's given you. Start seeking out when the next discipleship class is starting up. And equip yourself with the work of the ministry. Here's the sad truth. Most Christians are stuck in their past. Most Christians are stuck in their past. They got, they're, they're, they're stuck in their woundedness. Many Christians are stuck in their woundedness. There's two schools of thought on this. I pray that you'll take the first school of thought. But if you can't, then know it and get into the second school of thought and get yourself sorted out. Okay, here goes. The first school of thought. If you're a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, if you've committed yourself to him, your past is taken care of. Get over yourself. Stop getting in your feelings and go on about it. But if you can't get there, if you can't believe the gospel of Jesus Christ for yourself, then get yourself in an inner healing class and get sorted out. But hear me, it's not the inner healing class where you go to six classes and you still continue to go and you continue to go and you do nothing but the self-help ministry. This is not a self-help business. This is get cleaned up and let's go to work. 
This is get equipped. Put the put some tools on. This is equipped. Let's get a weapon on our shoulder. Let's get the rucksack on and the combat boots on, and let's go to business. Listen, you go into basic training here in the United States. I think it's five weeks for Army. I think it's uh, eight weeks for Marines, right? I, I think that's what it is. Kenny, is it eight weeks or is it ten weeks? Thirteen weeks for Marines, right? Because they're in the business. They're in the business, right? So here's the thing. But here's the thing. Right after they're done, they're expected. <laughs> they're okay. It's time to go to war. Let's do this thing. Uh, okay. Well, guess what? You're expected. Jesus has an expectation on you. He has an expectation on you. John records the words of Jesus in chapter 15. Let's pick it up there. In John chapter 15, it says, I am the true vine, and the Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me... And I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Now listen, friends. I have a sermon series just on these five verses. So there's no way that I can unpack these five verses in just a little bit of time that I have left tonight. But there is a progression here that Jesus is trying to, to, to let us know what's going on. When we give our lives to Christ, there's an expectation that we're, st we're going to start producing some fruit. When we begin to start pr pr producing fruit, and this is simultaneously, it's not like, well, okay, I'm producing fruit. Okay, we're going to sign you up for some pruning. Wait 10 weeks, and then you'll get to the pruning stage. And when the pruning stage, you can't do anything else. No, no, this is an ongoing basis. We're bearing fruit. And when you start bearing fruit, the Lord's going to go, you know what? I just want to lop this thing off right here. This dead part, I want to lop that off. You don't need this in your life no more. I'll give you an example. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm, uh, I give my life to the Lord on an amazing, miraculous thing that happened in a hospital room. And it was just amazing. And I started, go Jill and I started going to church, but we really weren't, we weren't living for the Lord. We were saved. The Lord used my greed to get me down to Florida. I got plugged in. And no, I didn't get plugged in. Excuse me. I got sidetracked. I got sidetracked by money. And I got sidetracked by play. I got sidetracked by play. At, I don't know how, even how old I was, but it was in probably my mid-30s. I decided that I was going to buy a motocross bike and, and race motocross. I don't know what I was thinking. Obviously, I wasn't thinking. Okay, but here's the long and the short of it. When the Lord began to call me back in, a, in a, call me back in. When He began to call me back in, I knew that I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. I knew it. And He goes, "That little red and white thing that you spend every weekend going on, I want it. I want it." Will you give it to me? It's there. It's paid for. But I want it. Will you intentionally give me that motocross bike so that you can walk into your calling? Or are you going to play with the thing? And it's okay. You're saved. You can go play with it. And watch the fire continue to go down. See, when he wants, to be, he wants to start pruning some of that dead stuff off on your life because he wants you to bear more fruit. Yeah, I was bearing a little fruit at that time. I was feeding into, into my employees. You know, maybe I had, I had an influence of maybe seven guys. Prune the motocross bike. Prune the racing every weekend. Prune, begin to, begin to start plugging into 
a church in a small group, all of a sudden, my center of influence went from 7 to 50. Bearing more fruit now, aren't I? Because I'm joining God at His work. It's not in me. Everything is in Him, but He works through me. He works through you. Your center of influence is in you. He's going to prune some more stuff off. Guess what? Your center of influence begins to expand. Right? That prayer, Lord, bless me. Increase my influences and opportunities for you. Man, there was a season that Jill and I prayed that, and the Lord just began to, foo, foo. And our center of influence all of a sudden went from 7 to 50 to 400. Oh, literally. But hear me. The ultimate thing is, is if you follow the progression, he wants to bear fruit in you. He wants to prune you. Then he wants you to bear more fruit that eventually you begin to bear much fruit. What does that look like? What does much fruit, what does bearing much fruit look like? It looks like, it looks like throwing a rock into a pond and watching the ripples of that go off into eternity. It's, it looks like grabbing a sister by the hand and saying, hey, listen, um, let, let's do this thing together. Let's begin, to, let's begin to seek after the Lord with all of our heart, mind, and soul and see what happens. It's about grabbing a brother and beginning to feed into him. And, and, and you know, many of us, we, we've heard this expression time and time again. And, so, and I was thinking about it today as I was out on the patio, just praying and, and just seeking the Lord on this message. I, I think there's some stigmatism to this, and I'm hoping I'm going to sort it out tonight. But we've heard this expression, everyone should have a Paul, everyone should have a Timothy, right? And that kind of like Paul was, was Timothy's spiritual father. And then, so, so everyone should have a spiritual father, but also everyone should have a spiritual child. Somebody that they're feeding into, right? And, and, and I was thinking, well, but nobody wants to be the child, do they? I do. I want to be the child. Just teach me. Just feed into me. If there, there's one characteristic I feel like the Lord's really placed on my heart is teachability. And that's been one of the things that, that I've, I've really... That, is, that has really helped me in my life is just closing this. Just, hmm. 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 And use these. And start asking questions. Well, what about that? What about this? What about that? And allow the Lord to begin to mature you in your faith so that you can feed into somebody else. So, If you've been in the faith, hear me now. <laughs> if you've been in the faith more than a year, you should have a Timothy. You should have a Timothy. If you've been in the faith more than a year, you should have a Timothy. For some of us, we get, I mean, for some people in the room, we get opportunity to get a Timothy almost immediately. You see, some of, the, some of the guys that have come through Faith Farm Program, they get a little brother when they come, when they come into the program. They've been in the program, I don't know uh, what it is. I can't remember now. Let's say um, 20 weeks. 20 weeks, and then they get a little brother that they can feed into. So all of a sudden, they got a, but you guess what? They got a big brother that was feeding into them that was 20 weeks ahead of them. Well, that's what our lifestyle should be like. We should have a lifestyle of having Paul's and having Timothy's. That's what this bearing much fruit is. Think about the guy. Think about the guy that fed into Billy Graham. <laughs> Think about the crowns, the crowns and the rooms for that guy. Think about the guy that, that fed into Randy Clark. Bill Johnson. Some of the people that... You know, think about the people that have fed into Heidi Baker, Leif Hetland, that, you know, millions of Muslims have come to know Jesus because of these people's ministry. Think about the guy that led Randy Dawkins to the, to, to the Lord. Think about that. Or do you want to be the guy or the gal that told Gandhi he wasn't allowed in church? 
You know that story, right? Gandhi comes into a church wanting to seek Jesus, and because of the color of his skin, he was asked to leave. I, won't, I wouldn't want to be standing behind that guy when the day comes. He didn't have the wherewithal to look beyond color to start feeding into a man that literally could have brought millions of people to Jesus. It just drives me crazy. The pruning is so we'll bear more fruit and then finally bear much fruit. You see, fire starters bear more fruit to bear much fruit. They intentionally fan into flames the Spirit of God living in them and the gifts that have been given to them. See, here's the thing is that many of us in the room, we don't know what our spiritual gifts are. I can guarantee you, you have them. And I can guarantee you, you have all of them. And I know people will raise an eyebrow to that that have been, in, the, been in, in church for a time. But hear me. You have all of them because you have the same Holy Spirit who produces all of them. Now, you might have some more th th that would be more manifest than others, but you have all of them. Find out what they are. Find out what they are and begin to pray and ask the Lord to work in them. Oh, I don't know. Well, be a fire starter. So in preparing for this message, I was praying, and I was, I'm, I'm going to read you my journal entry as I was praying for this message, and then we'll be done. <clears throat> oh, my Lord. So, so, Father, is there anything specifically you want to say to the people tonight at Mortal Life to inspire them to be fire starters in their center of influence? This is what I felt like I heard. Everyone who is a believer is qualified to be a fire starter. Frankly, Rick, there's an expectation that all would be to some degree or another. Just like the parable of the talons, each was given according to the, his abilities I ordained in them to have. Why haven't they sought to honor me in this way? Why, did, why have they not taken hold of what I have given them? Why have they not chosen to stay? Why have they chosen to stay in unbelief? Why have they specifically chosen not to engage a supernatural lifestyle that I have ordained for their life? Do they not love me? Rick, tell them I love them. I long for them to encounter the supernatural lifestyle I have ordained for them. Be a part of. But know this. They have to want it. Tell them, Rick. They have to want it just doesn't happen without them doing their part. Remind them that they are saved. They are loved. They are children of God. Co-heirs with my son who has inherited the kingdom of God. Now. Will you surrender to a higher truth? Or stay in fear and allow the life, the spirit of God be extinguished? Folks, God wants to do something so big in the lives of this group of people that would extend on into eternity. Twelve men upset the world. Can you imagine with a few women involved what could happen? Twelve men upset the world. I know there's more than twelve in here. I know there's more than twelve that are listening on the internet. Will we be fire starters? Will we allow the Lord to prune some of that dead stuff off of our life and use it as material to burn? That's the fuel. That's the fuel that starts to burn that fire in your belly, that fire in your inner being that wells up in you is all that junk, that dysfunction, that past. Those besetting sins. Throw that on the Holy Spirit's fire and allow Him to burn it off as dross. And let that thing burn up in you. And then get excited for what 
the Lord is doing in your life. Because when you get excited for what the Lord's doing in your life, people see it. Listen, it don't matter what comes out of their mouth. Because when the stuff hits the fan, and it always does for everybody, regardless of what they said when they met you, they will think about you in that moment. I wonder what that guy would have done. I wonder what that girl would have done when, they did, when that happened to them. And the Holy Spirit begins to work. Because he's given us a measure. Everyone's been given a measure of faith. We just got to get it on, and set it on fire. So here's the thing. Let me pray tonight. Some of you. Some of you. Some of you, man. Maybe your pilot light even went out. Maybe we got to relight it tonight. Maybe we got to pray for the, spirit, the, the fire of God to come down on you and relight that that pilot light tonight. Maybe some of you are on fire for Jesus. We just want to pray an anointing over you tonight so that you can go out, charge hell with a water pistol. So let me pray. And as the Lord leads, so Heavenly Father, Lord, tonight, we just thank you so much, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord, that we get to check ourselves, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity that you're giving us to be fire starters in this nation, Father God. Our heart's desire, Lord, our heart's desire, Lord, is that you would empower us, Father God, empower us to take a hold of this concept, Lord, and begin to fan into flames the spirit that you've placed in each one of us, Lord. Lord, tonight, I pray for blessings over each and every person in this room. I pray for blessings of those that are listening uh, on the internet, Father God. I pray in Jesus' name that this fire that you've placed in each one of us, Lord, will begin to, would to begin to just well up, Father God, that would begin to erupt in Jesus' name and that it would begin to overflow into our lives, Father God. And Lord, that it would catch on to the people in our center of influence. And so, Lord, I pray for each person represented and their families in this room, Lord, that as they go about their daily life, Father God, that they would actually not only be a fire starter for themselves, but begin to fire, start fires in other people's lives, Father God, so that they can begin to get on board with you, with what you want to do in this earth at this time, Father God. And so, Lord, we pray for a great reviving fire dwelling up in all of us, Jesus. For your glory and yours alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.